Hey everyone, Brian here for Short Circuited Brewers. Uh, I'm going to do another product review. It is the Speedle Fermenter. Um, I'm assuming I'm saying it correctly. I've heard Speidel, Speedle. I know it's German, um, so I'm going to I'm going to call it a Speedle Fermenter. Uh, it is a 60 liter fermenter, which uh, roughly I don't know the exact calculations, but it's right around 15 gallons. Um, I've been using these. I've got two of them actually. I've been using these because I've been doing 10 gallon batches on my system. And it just allows me to put everything in one fermenter and just pitch the yeast on it and not have to worry about two different uh, vessels and all that sort of thing. So, so today I want to run down the pros and the cons of it. And one of the pros first off is that, you know, it's a large fermentation vessel. You can do all of your fermentation in one vessel, pitch your yeast and everything. The second pro to it is that it has a huge opening. So, I mean, you can get in there clean it out very easily. It is HDPE, so you don't want to use anything abrasive on it, any kind of scuff pads or anything. They do sell some white scuff pads for them, but I just, I really don't, I don't like to use anything that has any kind of abrasive to it at all. I use just a little bit of uh, um, PBW and some hot water and a soft cloth to clean it out. And as long as you get it right after you're done with your fermentation, it doesn't it doesn't take much to clean them out at all. They clean up pretty good. So um, the other plus to it is that it has a gigantic airlock. So it has a great big hole in it. I can't imagine that uh, any beer you do is gonna you know have enough blow off that it's gonna clog that up. Matter of fact, I generally put 11 gallon batches in it, and I have not had any issues with any kind of overflow or anything like that. Um, I don't think it's ever even got to the airlock. Quite honestly, I've done a couple of Belgians that were super rambunctious fermentation as those usually are and didn't have any issues with it. So it's got a great big rubber stopper that fits into the lid, which is nice as well. Um, one of the one of the cons I'll tell you about in just a second is part of this strap here, but it has a nice uh, rubber O-ring seal around it. You can take it out, clean it, disinfect it. That's great. The other plus is that uh, it comes with a spigot. Um, and uh, some people don't like the plastic spigot, but you know, I, I haven't had any issues with it. I usually just dump it into some cleaner after I'm done with the fermentation. And, and then uh, I just uh, put it in some sanitizer after that. And I haven't had any issues with it. So it's been really good so far. The other positive part to it is that uh, my same hose that I use for my brewery to transfer everything around fits over it perfectly. I mean, it just it pops right up over top of the, the spigot there. I don't get any aeration or anything like that whenever I transfer the wort into a keg with it. So that's pretty much all the pros to it. Uh, some of the cons are uh, obviously this strap falls off quite a bit. So I'm going to make some modifications to it and show you what I'm going to do to it to help prevent that from happening. Um, the other con to it that I would say is that uh, when you get beer in this thing and it's, you know, 10 or 11 gallons, it's about 80 pounds. So, I mean, I can pick it up. I don't know if a lot of people can pick it up, but it is, it's pretty, it's a strain for me too. So, the handles will hold it. I've never had any issues. I've never thought the handles were going to break or anything like that. But, um, so, one of the, one of the things we're going to bring in a future episode is uh, Mike just moved into his uh, great big new, nice new shop. So, uh, we're going to do a little bit of woodworking for you guys. Uh, we've made some mash paddles and stuff in the past. So, um, we're going to actually make a wooden cart for this to sit on with wheels so I can roll it around the brewery here and then make it high enough that uh, I can drain it into a keg without having to set it up on top of a table or anything like that. Just leave, leave it in place. Without further ado, let's get over to the modifications. All right, so the first things you're going to need for doing the modification for the lid is going to be a pair of wire cutters, a permanent marker, a 764 drill bit, a cordless drill, and eight wire ties. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do on the top is we're going to actually put the strap in and we're gonna put a mark on either side of where the strap is on the plastic retainer. So there's like some retainers that go around the top. So we'll put a couple marks where those plastic retainers are. Um, we'll do that on all eight of them and then we will proceed to the next step. So the next step is to drill holes at your marks for the strap. Once you have the holes drilled, you're going to take the tie wrap and you're going to actually feed it through the back of the hole, pull the zip tie through, capture the strap underneath, and then we're going to pull this top portion back through. Now the reason why I'm putting these uh, on the bottom like that 
is because when you cut those off, they can be very, very sharp and I really don't feel like getting scratched up by them. So that will actually retain the strap and keep it from falling off. All right, so I just did that seven more times and got everything secured and it is not going to fall out now. I mean, it's just, it can't go anywhere. So um, I believe that is gonna be a good fix for that. So um, looks like that came out well. I hope this review helped. You make a decision on uh, whether or not you want to purchase one of these and uh, some modifications to possibly make it a little bit better for your use. Um, until next time, cheers. This has been Brian for Short Circuit Brewers.